Welcome back, everyone, to Fire Survival, episode number four. As you can see from that montage, we've been getting geared up a little bit, got some enchantments on my gear, got a fortune pick to get some diamonds. Down here, I also made a simple spider farm. We could come down here and kill them. They like to go up here, so I have like a weird setup here. And then I need to get the items and stuff down there. And that's how I got the levels for these enchantments. You could see we've been farming a lot, even got a skeleton jockey bone in there. So for this episode, I'm pretty excited for the project. We're going to be doing another build, finally. Not a house, but right here, I want to start putting paths in. And I thought this would be a great area for a bridge. So there could be a path coming down here to the bridge to the other side of this river. I've been working on that for a while, and I'm excited to get it into this world. So I went through and I took all my cobblestone and got it over here to start working on the bridge. But before I do that, I kind of want to show my thought process that went behind designing the bridge. I basically, I'll do this on a very mini scale. I made two circles like this, and I just chopped the bottom half, and then I made it look like a bridge and actually make it flat on top so you could walk over it. So this is kind of what we're going to be looking at for the bridge. It definitely looks way better than this, but you'll see soon. I went through and got this first layer placed. You could kind of see where we have the two circles that I was talking about earlier. Anyways, let's get the rest of this bridge finished. All right, so the bridge is pretty much done. It's pretty functional. You know, you could walk over it. That's the main purpose of a bridge. I still want to do some texturing over here. It's pretty much all just stone bricks. I just didn't want to deal with all the slabs and the stuff. But here it's pretty much done. We got some moss creeping up in the corners. I might add some grass over here. Moss over the side. So it's looking pretty cool from there. If we come down here, Sorry, I had to pick up some dirt, but if we come down here, you could see the shape we were talking about earlier. It's kind of one circle over there, one circle over here. Of course, this is built on a diagonal. Originally, I built it just straight, and then I used Axiom to flip it, and I had to clean up around here to make it look more even, but I got the shape by doing the thing I was talking about earlier, drawing two circles just there there cutting it in half and then just rotating it and then I started doing some texturing you could see we have some moss growing where there's water moss blocks which acts as just moss completely covering the stone some tough built in a little bit mostly cobblestone and stone with some andesite I love this little diorite patch over there I think it's a staple of the bridge for sure down here I want to texture a little more I'm still trying to figure out if I want to do something like deep slate to make it look darker when it's under the water but I also like the moss because it's easy and cheap to get and just do that straight down something else that's really cool if we come down here let me place a block to stand down here it's all tough pretty much and some deep slate here to act like the shadows obviously under the bridge would be darker than over there so I wanted to help the shadows seem a little darker under here so when you're over here you could tell it's darker there and you can imagine that the water affected the bridge in some sort of way, making it darker like that. It's kind of like grimy too. And over here we have the same thing, even mix in a little smooth basalt right there. On this side, pretty much same thing, some moss growing over there, around where the water is, and less so up top. Overall, I'm really happy with the bridge. I wanna, I wanna finish up this area and this area, get the top finished too. Here, let's go into let's go into a little cheaty cam to get 
the full picture of it. Overall, I'm really happy with how this bridge turned out. Also, while we were building a bridge, this guy showed up. Actually, two of them showed up. One had nothing, and this guy has some good stuff. This guy is a feature in almost every... He's running away now, but this guy has a feature in almost every single one of the episodes because, you know, the saplings are just so important. I haven't really found any other biomes. We only have this plains right now. There's a beach over there with the sand, but... I haven't really needed glass so far because I've been using mostly fences for windows. But I hope in next episode or something we could go explore and get other biomes because I still need some trees. Anyways, here's the wandering trader clip. Just traded with this wandering trader. I got a dark oak sapling and a cherry sapling. This is beyond perfect because we only have three dark oak saplings from our last visit with the wandering trader. Now we'll get more wood types growing. Dark oak and cherry. Start with the dark oak. We definitely need this to drop four saplings. Worst comes the worst, we could always buy more from the wandering trader, but I really don't want to trade all my weed in. All right, we got a bunch of cherry saplings, but four dark oak saplings isn't the best, but it's enough to get another tree growing. I really don't want to buy more because I don't want to lose all my emeralds. Let's hope this drops at least five so we could... Once we have eight, I think we should be good. This is terrible for my pick durability, but I'm going to go ahead and break these with fortune three to try to get more saplings. We only got four saplings again, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy more. Okay, back to building now. The whole point of the bridge was to start connecting our world a little more, and I think with that comes paths. Last episode, we started laying out some ideas for where we want paths to go, and I'm going to start laying out some of those right now. Okay, so we got the path in. It's looking pretty cool, pretty simple design. We have just path blocks with some coarse dirt around the side. I really like the look of that. Tried to mess it up a little so it's not perfect and just on the borders, some stray path blocks out there, some grass coming in. Here, we'll walk along the path right now. It goes up here and it will go around the ravine that's being worked on in the background. That's a little too flat, but we'll fix that. It kind of loops around here. There's no coarse dirt on the edges yet. We'll fix that, but this is the most interesting spot. If we go into cheaty cam and go up, it's kind of a weird point because at first I had a path going down here connecting to that wheat, but we might get rid of that wheat. So either we'll curve this out, make it more like a path, probably go that way, or we'll have to build something here to make it seem like it's going around something to work properly. Also, something that might be cool is to put some fences around the sides to frame the path. I want it to kind of make sense, so I'm not sure if I'll do that yet, but this one here was just a horse hitching post, but it kind of gave me the idea. I've done that in the past, and I think it could look cool in some areas. I think it's time to get away from building and start working on gearing up a bit. I've been going mining a bunch. We have tons of deep slate from strip mining and tons of stone and cobblestone too. We got some raw iron, raw gold, diamonds, lapis. We've been using our fortune three. So we got a bunch of diamonds here. So it's really funny. One was left over from last episode. And then at the beginning of this episode, we mined a bunch to get this helmet because normally I would just wait until I have fortune three to start mining them but I had respiration three in the enchantment table and I really just wanted to get that on a good helmet because I feel like that's rare sometimes. But when I mined the rest of that vein, we got 10 diamonds from three diamond ore, which is absurd. And then later I got four from three or four from four. So we were really lucky and then we were really unlucky, but 
it all evens out and now we got 15 so i could go ahead and make a chest plate and some boots but i wouldn't have enough for pants i think more importantly we should make a diamond pick and work on that let's go check the enchantment table right now i made a sword and a pick so we could see what the enchantment table has right now bane of arthropods not good at all i'm breaking three not good at all let's re-roll this with a level one bane of arthropods again i need another pick efficiency four that is perfect for a pickaxe so i'm gonna go ahead and grind some xp and then hopefully this is efficiency four silk touch i'm breaking would be sick finally done killing all these spiders we got a stack and five string we've been here for a while normally i get all my diamond tools with villager trades and stuff like that but i think it's worth it just to craft a pick right now so let's just go for it here we have efficiency four and a diamond pick let's see what it gives us wow just efficiency four is not that not that good definitely wanted silk touch on that too but we'll have to re-roll let's see what the sword gives us sweeping edge three that's actually really good for a sword we might need to go ahead and use that and what about for a pick i'm breaking three that's not that good hoping that just comes with a efficiency enchantment also going back to the villager trading stuff it's good because you could just make a bunch of pickaxes for cheap for like a couple of emeralds and then combine the enchantments in an anvil. But, you know, if I make another diamond pick and enchant it and get on breaking and combine them, that's six diamonds for one pick versus just a couple of emeralds. Off over there, we have a village I might start working on making some of those people trades. I know I locked a couple of them in there and maybe you could set up a villager breeder and stuff i think i'll do that mostly off camera maybe or maybe we'll put that in the next episode who knows sometimes a lot of that stuff is a little tedious but definitely worth it oh why do we have a did a trader just spawn on us and die Why, why don't the llamas live? What just happened? I don't even have a replay going to try to watch. This is probably the second wonder trader that's died in this ravine. You know, there, what, there was one with the mangrove proper rules. That one also fell to its doom. Yeah, no, no wandering trader. And we have the lead, so it's, it's definitely dead. That's really unfortunate. I don't even know how that happened. That really sucks. I thought I was gonna get more trees today. Anyways, I think I need to go grind out some more levels and try to get better enchantments. Hopefully we can get a better pickaxe too, get our sword, and I'll probably focus on... That sweeping edge three is really good, so I might go ahead and make a diamond sword and only have the sword and the pick. It's the same thing with the respiration. I use the diamonds on that just to get those because otherwise you need to cycle through so many enchantment tables cycles or whatever it's called one last thing before we start working on those levels i thought it was important to finally put this wall in this is still probably just a temporary design i might put some signs on the edge too to make it look a little more rugged but i think the walls will go good with the acacia logs just because there's no other fences that type of color and We'll get this going across. Right now it's just andesite and cobblestone. We'll probably put some smooth stone walls in there too. I don't even know if that's a block, but we might have to put smooth stone brick walls in there instead. And hopefully this should mean wandering traders will spawn on the outside so they don't keep on falling in and leaving all their llamas down there. Should we try to tame this one? I don't know if they're already tamed or anything. Because I wonder if we could get the llamas to stay down here. We might have to put like a chest in the llama or something. We have a chest here, but... 
Yeah, nothing. And I don't want to use that one. Anyways, let's get some of those levels going and get more enchantments. So I've been enchanting for quite a bit, have been going back and forth between the enchantment table and the spider grinder, just getting up to 30 levels and enchanting something, disenchanting stuff, re-enchanting stuff. Went through almost a stack of lapis, but it was worth it. We got a ton of different enchantments, a lot of books, which I wasn't really expecting to do. Usually you get the enchantments you want easier if you just enchant the tool you want because there's more of a limited selection of the enchantments it could be. But I was getting a lot of good book options, so I just went for it and it really worked out. The amount of spiders I had to kill to get that many levels to enchant that much is absolutely insane. I've killed 1,600 spiders, and to put that into perspective, the second highest statistic right now is cows, and I've only killed 123. Since I was going back and forth between the enchanting area and the spider spawner, I made an easier way to get down. If we just drop here, we'll fall all the way down to the spider spawner. Look, we got a bunch of glow squid in there too, which is why we have some glow ink sacs. But overall, we have so many spider eyes, it's absolutely insane. And we almost have a full chest of string, which really just shows how many of these guys that we killed. I took everything from the enchantment session and put it in this barrel. We got aqua affinity, respiration, feather falling, power four, unbreaking three, efficiency four. Both of these we could put on this pick, which is Diamond Silk Touch Efficiency 4. We'll get that up to Efficiency 5 with that. And then I'm breaking a Sweeping Edge Sword, Knockback 2. I don't really care about Knockback, but Sweeping Edge was good, but, you know, I really need Sharpness. And then I enchanted a bunch of Iron stuff too, just because you might not get Diamond Gear for a little while more, and Enchanted Iron's pretty good. So we have Sharpness 4 Sword, Efficiency 4 Pick. Efficiency for a shovel. This fortune three is old, but still great. This is a good, easy silk touch pick. Efficiency two and breaking two silk touch. And then this crazy good ax will be good for chopping down some trees. So let's go ahead and add this unbreaking three to this pick. And then at this point, we're pretty much just missing mending on this pick. And this is a perfect pickaxe. I also forgot to mention this before. The gear I have right now is not really good at all. Feather falling, one iron boots, no enchantments, and protection one. The helmet's fine, we put respiration on it from the table, but I really don't want fire protection. I might take this off just so it doesn't break, I don't want to waste the diamonds on this. But we just weren't really rolling anything good from the enchanting table. Tool and book enchantments were overall better, and if there was a good enchantment on a book, I'd rather save that and put it on diamond gear once I get more of that later. Overall, I think we had a really good episode. We got this awesome bridge done. We got a great pickaxe to start working more efficiently. I need to pick up some of the iron tools that I had enchanted and start rocking those because those are amazing and will help efficiency too. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.